the Wendy Williams Show. the virtuals at home. How you doing? I'm ready to go, let's get started. It's time for Hot Topics. Pleasure. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, um, my pleasure. So look, this Piers Morgan, okay, I don't know whether you saw this, but I have it for you. He walked off of his own show. It happened earlier this morning. Okay, so on Monday, Piers um, was really just digging at what we thought was his old friend, Meghan Markle, and her husband, Harry, um, after they did their interview with Oprah. Well, the weatherman, who I now love, <laughs> because normally you think of weather people as being so nice. You know, I know weather people. I mean, that's, that, that'd be like Al Roker or Mike Woods or something, cursing someone out, and he didn't curse. He's very well-spoken in what he says, and shade is the word. Yes. <laughs> to the point where Piers walked off. Old man, I mean, not old man, but you know, <laughs> no. A older established man with a lot of respect could not take it. And the worst thing to me you could do is walk off from somebody, because that means they won. Take a look. And I understand that you don't like Meghan Markle. You've made it so clear a number of times on this program a number of times, and I understand that you've got a personal relationship with Meg Markle or had one, and she cut you off. She's entitled to cut you off if she wants to. Has she said anything about you since she cut you off? I don't think she has, but yet you continue to trash her. OK, I'm done with this. No, no, no. Sorry, no. Uh, Sorry. Uh, so, do you know what? That's pathetic. You can trash me, maybe, not my No, own no, no, no. See I'm, you later. I'm being... Sorry, can't this do this. This is absolutely diabolical behaviour. You he, I'm sorry, but Pierce spouts off on a regular basis and we all have to sit there and listen. 6.30 to 7 o'clock yesterday was incredibly hard to watch. Wow. <laughs> Not for me. It was real entertaining. Uh -huh. so, so then after the commercial break, Piers came back, but here's the backstory a little bit with um, Piers and Meghan. Apparently, when Meghan had her very first date with Harry, when the date was over later on that evening, she met her then friend Piers at the pub. Yes, you know. And then after they left the pub, he never heard from Meghan again. Oh. See? And I kind of look at Meghan, I told you I like her, but you know, why couldn't she just call him and say, our relationship is not gonna be convenient anymore. I like Harry. Because the, the first family, or whatever you call, what do you call those people? The royals? Family. <laughs> <laughs> the royals, everyone, um, the royals do not like peers. The royals think he's diabolical and, you know, low and whatnot, you know, but that's what comes with what Piers does or maybe what we do here and, you know, I'll take it. <laughs> But what I won't do is walk off. No. So Piers um, then interviewed Megan's father later on in the day. Now you see, you see, so he's just digging a little further. His name is Thomas, and Thomas explained why he speaks to the press. Take a look. Because I haven't heard from them, is I'll do a story for the press. If I don't hear from them in 30 days, 
then I'll do another story for the press. And I've yet to hear from them. Thomas. Uh, I would love to hear from them. Uh, and of course. And they, they would say, Thomas, why do you keep talking to the press? What, what's your response to that? Because they're not talking to me. The story. Uh, uh, when they decide to talk to me, I'll stop talking to the press. Okay. I know! See, I'm Tim Thomas on this particular thing because I feel, no, yes, I am. Uh. Mm. Norntman, you've got no soul. <laughs> and, and, but also, neither does her father. And, no, he's an old man. And 76. He's an old, 76, but he's apparently not well, you know, I guess he goes in and out of swollen ankles or whatever he does, you know. He, do he doesn't look spry at 76, number one. And number two, um, he's got two grandchildren. Well, the little girl's on the way, but he's got two grandchildren that he's never met. And, you know, Megan does not have to accept him all the way in her family but maybe a little hideout one day in Malibu when they get back to the boo <laughs> and invite him over with no press involved, you know, and, and have him play with the grandchildren and have some scones, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and then send him on his way. Everybody already knows where they live, so it's not like a secret that, you know, if he's being followed where we live and everything. I just feel like at his age and I guess all he's been through in life, with the ups and downs. And yes, you say he caused it. I know. Mm hmm When Megan had the miscarriage, he was nowhere around. He was yeah. doing interviews. And like she confessed to the whole world she had a miscarriage on Sunday night. And um, by Monday, he's doing TV. Yeah. It ain't right. It ain't right. It ain't right. It ain't right. <laughs> How about maybe he just wants to hug his daughter and see his grandchildren? I mean, Harry has very little to do with it. If Harry doesn't want to be involved, fine. But I'll tell you something. If something detrimental happens to this man, she will regret it. She, you, you know what I'm saying? And that's the bottom line. She'll regret it. And I feel as though something organized can be done, Megan. Like, make this somewhat right. He's walking around, <laughs> buying beer. Eating bad food. Clearly, he eats bad food. <laughs> yeah. You know, when he called the paparazzi the one time, they had called him about doing an interview and following him while he gets fitted for suits. And so, you know, to change his image a bit when she started to see. But I don't blame him for that. You, you saw he doesn't know how to dress. If you're gonna, if you're gonna. <laughs> other than on Saturdays. But if you're gonna be a royal uh, father person thing, you've gotta look the part sometimes. You don't have to have a whole collection of suits, but one or two really good Tom Ford suits or something. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> it smells so good here and my mouth is what a tire inga. <laughs> because Guy, yes, there he is. He's married to Lori, but he is so hot. Yeah. yeah, to me. And he just goes with the hair, why not? He's got like a great personality and he knows how to cook and he eats junk food and... <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm always watching something because he's always on. Anyway, so he'll be here later and he sent over a whole bunch of food for me and staff. You know, cause, yeah, he's zooming in. Oh, yeah. but, he, but he rushed the food over. I feel very guilty because last night was Monday night. Eight o'clock, what do I watch? The Bachelor. Yes! I planned around watching it, okay? So, boring Matt. Reunited with his estranged father, and I caught feelings and felt a tear about to escape. Oh, what? I know! What? I know! 
Well, Suzanne, I do have feelings. No, I, I know you do. I know, but this is a this is a three a whole one eighty you've done on this show. No, I still don't like him. He's okay. still boring. He's, okay, he's yeah. not for me. Okay. And and whoever he picks, racist Rachel, which is what I say, she's not gonna be with him for longer than a year. You give it a year for them to promote their things, and she's gonna leave him. Nobody wants to hang around with this. You know how many times he cries. No, you know how many times he cries in two hours. And when he cries, he cries and bites his bottom lip, and you see the t no, like like a little boy, like or like a girl or something. He cries. It's just a mess. But this right here, I caught feelings. Take a look. You started other families. That affected me. And I need to know where your head was at so that I don't make those same mistakes going forward. Do you know what I went through with your mom when you guys were like two or three? You want me to tell you real deep, bro? I came home one day, your mom and your mom was gone, bro. For good reason. Who wants to be with someone who's not gonna be faithful to him? But what is perfect, son? Look around you in this world. Who is perfect? I'm not perfect. You're not perfect yourself. <laughs> I'm sorry I hurt you, son. I'm not holding grudges against those things. I just want us to move forward and... <sighs> Right? Yeah. Uh-oh. An escape. Both both eyes. First of all, this is are you, is he sure this is his father? I mean, he's not a bad-looking man, but normally when you see good-looking kids, you feel that they take a piece of one and a piece of the other, and then they're just really gorgeous like Matt is. But the mother gave him everything that we admire. Dad cheated on mom royally, you know, when Matt was really little and couldn't understand, you know, where's dad, where's dad? And goes out and has a litter of other families. Like he goes out and just is wiling out out there in the streets. And the mom stayed there with him and raised him the best that she could. So now he's trying to sort it out. But Matt is old enough at this particular point where I'm surprised he's never had this conversation with his father. It almost seemed like it might've been a bachelor swoop down, you know? where The Bachelor invited him to be on the show about one thing, and it became that. Now, uh, Mr. James did hold his head, though. You know, he didn't scream, he didn't yell, and that, that hug and so on and so forth. I just, anyway, and it didn't take Matt long for me to get right back in his neck. Boring Matt. <laughs> <laughs> so last night, they, he had, okay. There were three bachelorettes left, left last night, and and here they are. They all thought that he, they were gonna be the wife. They all thought, and he brought them on single dates, which if you count, that means he had sex with three different women in, on three different nights. What a hoa. <laughs> wow, Matt. But once I saw the rose ceremony, I said, no, he didn't. He only had sex with Brie who to me, uh, I mean, Michelle, the school teacher is cute, and Rachel, the racist, is cute, uh, if you put the TV on mute. <laughs> but this girl right here, Brie, Brie was winning and he was so nice to her. At one point, he picked her up and carried her off to the suite. I said, oh, he's about to throw her on the bed and do her dirty. <laughs> he sent Brie home last night. And as soon as I saw that he sent Brie home, I definitely said, okay, they did have sex. You know how before you dismiss somebody, you want it one more time? <laughs> but look, she's crying her eyeballs out. And then she had the patience to sit on the couch. You know, once you get dismissed, you don't go over here with this man and sit on the couch and privately talk about, you know, I'm so sorry, Rachel, but no. No, you leave and hail a cab. I don't even want to take your car to where I'm going. Pick a finger. Anyway, so next week what will happen is that will be the finale and I won't be talking about The Bachelor anymore until the next one starts. Cause now I'm just hooked at Bachelor, Bachelorette, you know, black people, Asian people, white people, <laughs> whoever you all put on there, I'm in for it. But I will sit here like a high critic of all of the movements. Yeah. I feel like the way I watch, I've made up for lost time, you know what I'm saying? Uh, 
Anyway, I think he is going to pick racist, racist Rachel. Michelle's heart is gonna be broken and then that'll be that. Two hours I'll never get back. So. Um, in the meantime, the Real Housewives of um, Salt Lake City, there's this, and I do watch that show. They need more viewers, but you, you gotta watch the show. It's a, it's a mess. Look at these girls. And they all have this same look, like it's a Salt Lake City thing, do you know what I'm saying? I like it though, I like gaudy stuff. I do. Anyway, so Jen, Jen is being slammed after a video was released of her screaming at her dressmaker. Now first, before we play, wait, don't show the dressmaker yet. He's really something else. But here's Jen and don't think she's acting for the cameras. She, she had no idea and then this was leaked. She had no idea. She really is that mean to the people around her. She's screaming at the dressmaker like you and I don't scream to people. I don't know about you, I don't scream at people like that. You know, I use my words and sometimes they hurt just as bad. <laughs> but raising your voice and, and just look. Don't have a attitude with me. Okay, okay. No, you are shut the up! Get the out, I'm tired! Everybody leave. You ain't heard this is funny? This is funny? This is my Who talks to people like that? Now, she's only like five feet tall. <laughs> All right, I'm just, you know, giving you perspective. And she's married to um, some ex NFL sports person, football coach. Yeah. And there they are. I would find that behavior so unsexy. I literally, as husband and wife, I would grab her in the other room by her hair as she walks with me and I would lecture her on how not to talk to people and, all, and also I want off this show and you get off the show too, or we're done. You can't, you can't talk to people like that. How many kids do they have? Uh, two sons. Two sons. So this is, what, uh, this is what mom does. Oh, might I present the dressmaker? <laughs> That's what I said, uh-huh. Mm. Oh, he's got a pouty lip. The way you get that, you know, the Olsen twins say, you say prune, prune. prune. <laughs> Look, but, and he didn't clap back at her or anything. He just took it. His, his name is Koa Johnson. And Koa says, allegedly, the verbal assaults have been going on for about 10 months. Allegedly, he says he hasn't been paid in months. And why do I believe everything Koa is saying? Just mean. Is there any more to this story? I no. don't think so, no. That's it. Yeah, that's it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and by the way, Bravo, don't you dare think of firing her for that behavior. It makes for great TV, yeah. just say. I wanna see she and her husband fight about the behavior. You know what I'm saying? And I wanna see the sons chime in. I don't care how old they are. Five, 10, 20, I don't care. Get in your mom's neck. <laughs> Something's coming on TV that I think we're all gonna to wanna to watch together. And it's on regular TV. So yeah, it's gonna be on Lifetime and it's gonna be on A&E. A &E. The Janet Jackson documentary. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. I know. So she allowed cameras to follow her for three straight years, which to me is enough. Do you know how much information you get for just three years? I don't need to know young Janet. I don't need to know any of that. I wanna know how she and um, her ex-husband 
how they got along. And, and I wanna know, I wanna, don't necessarily need to see the baby all the time. You know, bring him in once and then you can put him back over there so we can have adult talk. Oh, oh. I wanna hear more about how she battles her weight, like all of us, and she's always, you know, shared that. I wanna hear, does she like, clo you know, clothing shopping? Um, Janet, years ago, used to never carry a handbag, which always used to be funny to me. You know, she, she'd never have a handbag, but recent Janet, every once in a while, you do see her with a handbag, crooked yeah. in her arm. Strange. But back Janet. in the day, she never, well, she has security and people to do that, uh -huh. or maybe she just did, you know. And her keys were in her ear. <laughs> anyway, I want to hear her talk about the Super Bowl, and I want to hear what she really thinks of Justin Timberlake. I want her to talk about her brother Michael. I want her to talk about LaToya. Um, I want her to talk about her sister that Joe had who lives in Vegas. Well, squash the rumor then. It's always been alleged. We've been talking about that for years. At least I have. And the girl looks like Janet. <laughs> I want to know if she drives. Don't you want to know? No, I know she gets driven, but does she drive? And what's her car of choice? Does she know how to drive a stick? Or does she drive regular? Does she ever just leave the house and go out behind a tent, leave the baby at home, and just drive? Yeah? Anyway, it's called Janet, and it's gonna premiere early next year. I'll remind you. And we've got more great show for you, everybody. Up next, Guy Fieri is here, so grab a snack and come on back. Guy Fieri. Hi. This is awesome. You're the best. Thank you. <laughs> so are you. Hey, shoe cam, please. Are we going there now? Yes. I'm in Cali, I wear flip flops. That's okay. You're also yeah. in, you're Who's also. Close? The best flip flop. Yeah, I'm gonna send you some of these, Whitney, they are the bomb. Uh, okay. <laughs> he doesn't know I can't wear flip flops, don't tell him. Um, so, I, I see, didn't hear that. I see we're at home with you. I love, yep. I love everything about your empire, you know, everything about it. And that particular show, what I like about it the most, other than that it's you, is that it's Sunday nights at eight o'clock. So it gives me something to do other than always watching The Housewives. Really, and it's very entertaining. Now, I, we watched it last night here with the family, and my parents were here. It was the, you know, the season premiere. And it's an amazing show doing so many different things. I mean, it serves so many different situations from recognizing the uh, amazing chefs and their talents and their skills. It gives them a great platform to show what they can do. Also, we've you know, given away a lot of money this year to support restaurants in need. Uh, there's just so much going on. So I'm really glad you enjoyed it. So it's, a fun, it's an amazing but show to do. It's more than a lot of money. I mean, you've given away millions of dollars. Yeah, it's, you know what it is, is these chefs are all feeling the same thing and having my own restaurants and having restaurants closed and some open and, you know, there's just so many different facets to it. It was, it was a time and we have a great president at, at the Food Network named Courtney White. And when I said, we're getting ready to do this show, these chefs are hurting, restaurant industry's hurting, let's do something extra. So the chefs came out, propped the restaurants that they love so much, and then we gave $10,000 per winning chef. I mean, it was uh, $250,000 in just donations alone. But overall, since you've been on TV, you've oh. raised quietly behind the scenes, he doesn't want to brag, millions of dollars. $25 million, I heard. All right, let's talk. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well when, you know, that, you know we, this, the pandemic has been so difficult on everybody. And I think that all of us in our respective communities or industries tried to do what we could do. And, and being a chef and a restaurant owner myself, as soon as the pandemic hit, I remember saying to my wife, I said, 
you know, in next week, there's going to be a lot of people in this industry that are expecting that paycheck to make their house payment, their car payment, their whatever it may be, because we live pay to, you know, paycheck to paycheck in the restaurant business. And we said, we need to start raising some money. So I started making these videos and sending them to the CEOs of the major companies that are directly involved in the restaurant business. And everybody said I was a little bit crazy, including my wife. And uh, I sent out 43 of them. And the next morning, and it gives me goosebumps, Wendy, to still say this. The next morning, I got a call from Pepsi, and they said, we want to give you a million dollars. And it just continued to snowball. We got up to almost $25 million, and I partnered with the National Restaurant Association, and they were the ones that were awesome about bringing in the money and getting it out to the employees. But we gave out 43,000 checks to restaurant employees that, that had lost their jobs. So Unbelievable. Pretty, pretty great, big effort. I am... Um... And what I love about you also is that you're very, very family oriented. It's really nice. It, like, I love when Hunter, um, Hunter is the one with the darker shirt. Hunter comes in the kitchen and cooks with Guy. And he also knows how to criticize. And he's also really nice with the, <laughs> like, no, but good for you because that means that you're gonna, Hunter will take over the family empire when you get tired of doing it. Now, what does Ryder do? Does he, is he in business or something? Because Ryder, you have to help out too. Hi, Lori. We'll get Ryder to you in a moment. Is, Ryder, Ryder's a freshman in high school, so uh, that's a very interesting relationship that he has. As you know, when they get into being a freshman, that's, there's a big change going on. And he hasn't been able to go to high school because they've been doing distance learning here. So kind of bummed to see that that didn't happen. But he's an amazing kid. He's on TV with us quite a bit. Um, he has his responsibilities. He says if he doesn't make it in the NBA, that he'll probably come into the family <laughs> business. But he's How hitting the him. NBA right now. So you have 75 <laughs> restaurants. Now, how are you directly affected, your restaurants? Uh, did you stay open? Did you cl what did you do? No, the majority, just about everybody, everything was closed at one point or time. We're back open now, the majority of them. Uh, still operating at very low numbers, maybe about 40% of what we did you know, in the year prior. Uh, but we have it a lot better than most. I got to be honest. There's yeah. so many people. You know, we were out shooting diners, drivers, and dives down in Florida last week, and it, which was great, by the way. And mm -hmm. and the, that state's doing great, and those restaurants are almost open to capacity. But there's so many states and so many areas that don't have outside dining, yeah. um, that don't have these the, the availability. So it's it's the the restaurant industry is still really in need, and I want to encourage everybody to please order out. Please get delivery. Please get to go. Please go buy gift certificates and support your local restaurants because this is the really, this is the tough time. Yeah. So, Guy, you're the third chef to get a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Wow. Good for you. Oh, man. Uh, now, whenever you get the star, because I've, I've won two, and you have to get special people to speak for you. Who, who'd you get to speak for you? Well, uh, I had my good friend Matthew McConaughey uh, and my son <laughs> Hunter, can't. and it was, uh, I'm going to tell you, I, when you know, because you, you've been through it, it was probably one of the most surreal, unbelievable events of my life. I'm a cook. Yeah. yeah. I grew up in Northern California. I was just happy to own my own restaurant. That's all I really wanted to do. Yeah. You know, and, and then to see the way it's escalated, but that opportunity to have the star and have all my family there. My dad had just beat pancreatic cancer. So to have my dad there with me and my mom, I flew my aunts in my wife, my boys, Hunter spoke. Yeah. Ryder oh. came up on stage with me. Oh. I'm not kidding you, Andy. I had to keep sunglasses on. I just, I just think about something else. I, I know. I, I like cried there. the whole day. I could, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> exactly. So, so, um, exactly. So, so you're really good friends with Drake. How did that come about? Oh, so Drake. Oh gosh, what a great guy. You know, I was shooting up in uh, Toronto. Um, this is years ago. We were up there shooting, and. He was having dinner in a dining room, closed dining room. He lived in the building where this restaurant was. And we just sat there and started talking about food and his love. I mean, he really loves food. He's into it in so many ways. And we were talking about recipes. And, and I said, hey, if, you know, if the kitchen's open, I'll take you in there. We'll go. And, the, the, of course, the restaurant was closed. But the chef caught wind that Drake and Guy Fieri were sitting out there and that we wanted to come in and cook. And they opened it up and threw us a couple chef coats. And there we were cooking. Wow. And uh, I tell you what, I've told him every time we talk about it, I go, you should – you should either open your own restaurants, write a cookbook, do something. But he's kind of busy these days. Well, yeah. <laughs> I got a lot going on. Um, 
So I watch diners, drive-ins, and dives all the time. And I was talking to my staffers here. We all watch. Now, we're not cooking that food. You know, I'd rather buy the food than cook it. I don't want to learn how to cook. I, I mean, I know enough. You know, I'm single now. And I, and I live in the city. I don't live in Jersey anymore. And my son's in college, you know, in Florida. So, but eating out is my favorite thing. Like, my fridge always has the plastics from the... But I feel like that's what you're supposed to do. I mean, not just to avoid cooking, but to help the restaurants. Yeah. It really, I'll tell you, and that's what's, the, the restaurant industry is so amazing. You know, this is what I've done my whole life before I got into the TV thing. But I'll tell you what it is, is the restaurant industry, we learn to adapt and overcome. And as a chef and as a restaurant owner all my life, I mean, you have to, you're, you're running a special on the menu and all of a sudden they're not going to send you the snapper. You got to change gears in, you know, middle of dinner rush on yeah. a Saturday night. And, and that's what we do. And so the restaurants have really come into this wonderful new realm that most of most restaurants weren't doing, which was the delivery program. Now you got great groups out there that are doing uh, Uber Eats, uh, DoorDash, all that you got some stuff. really great companies out there. And the thing is, is most restaurants weren't even participating. Now almost everybody is. So it's a really good opportunity. Uh, you want to help the restaurants to get that what, service on your um, phone. Tell me, what is your nephew up to? Um, Guy's sister passed away a few years ago, and Guy and Lori are raising him, you know, there at the house. How old is he now? Jules just turned 21 uh, last, uh, oh, wait. Ju last are you July. Oh, wait, he's, oh, that's so, him? Wow. Yeah, so what happened, that sweatshirt that he has on right there, when I was talking to Drake, before we went to cook, I was telling him what a fan my nephew Jules was, and Drake said, hang on a second. And he was gone for like 20 minutes. And, I'm, and I said to the guys, I go, where'd he go? And he goes, he's getting something for your nephew. And uh, he runs down and he gives this sweatshirt. And this is before I think the clothing line even really started to emerge. Yeah. But he gave the sweatshirt and signed it for Jules. And then this is Jules at 20 when Drake was playing in Oakland, close by oh. here, you know, Northern California. And Drake had him backstage and signed the other side of the sweatshirt wow. for Jules. Wow. And it was, I mean, it's a big everybody deal. was out of their mind. So Great guy. We've, we've already talked about Flavortown. Is there anything more that you want to say about the show? We know the charity. We know the chefs. You know, it comes on at 8 o'clock on Sundays. Do yourself a favor and watch the flavor. Hey. <laughs> so here's what we did. We knew restaurants. We have so many restaurants that can't do the business in the front door because they have limited seating. So what we did is partnered up with over, well, it's going to be 200 restaurants by next week. But we have 200 restaurants nationwide where we have our program, our virtual kitchen called Flavor Town Kitchen. So Guy Fieri favorites, bacon, mac and cheeseburgers, the pig popper, that stuffed jalapeno you're enjoying right now. Um, the chicken guy sandwich. Oh. All of this is available, and uh, it's the real deal, right? All of it's available at my apartment. I'm taking it home. Guy, always nice to see you. What a nice man, oh, right? You are the best. Guy Fieri, Thank you, everybody. I, I miss you. It's called Tournament of Champions, and it airs on um, Sunday nights at 8 o'clock on the Food Network, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Time for Ask Wendy. Now, Diane is in Chicago. Hi, Diane. How you doing? How you doing, Wendy? Fine, thank you. What's your question? Well, like you, I'm single, a woman of a particular age, decided to get back on the dating scene, got on a dating app, decided to date outside of my race, okay. and I met a guy. He's a really nice guy. Well, things escalated. He decided to send me sexy pics, one in the shower and one on the couch. And he continues to ask me, you know, what do you think about these pictures? I'm not used to this. There was a time probably in his life when the tattoos on the stomach were sexy. Now they look like Beavis and Butthead. Um, so what, how do I respond well, to this? It, I just don't know. Is he, is he our age or is he real young? He's our age. Okay, so you just tell him, you know, just like you're telling me, with a little laughter and levity so you don't hurt his feelings, um, if you want to continue on, because I'm sure he could cr criticize you, you under your clothes and me under my clothes. You know, we all, you know, you live long enough and nothing is perfect, but we can keep it reasonably good. Um, just let him know. You don't want to send him pictures and you don't want your pictures. He's a very, very nice man, but can we continue on being the mature people we are and date? 
Right. No sexy pictures. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I like it. I OK. Like it. Thanks. Now, Thank you. Cindy. Cindy is in Texas. Hi, Cindy. What's your question? How you doing? How you doing? So my question is, is I've been with my boyfriend for four years. Uh, we moved in about a year ago, about a year ago. And before I moved in with him, I let him know what my expectations were about marriage and how I just wasn't going to shack up with somebody. Oh. So it'll be a year that we moved in together this Friday, um, but there's still no ring on my finger, nothing. Should I wait or what should I do? Well, um, do you have children? We do not. We do have children separately. Our children are older, okay. so we're empty nesters. Well, have the conversation with them. Have the conversation before Friday. That way you can enjoy. This, this sounds like something where maybe he wasn't marriage-minded. Maybe he thought you'd change your mind. What was his response to you about wanting to get married? Well, he's never been married before, and oh. he said he wanted to make sure that he only got married once in life, and so he wanted to make sure that it was going to work out, you know, before he, you know, proposed or did anything. And I brought it up, and he just tells me, you know, what's going to happen, you know, just be patient, but it'll happen. I don't know that it's going to happen. If I were you, after dating him for four years, I wouldn't have moved in with him or him move in with you. I wouldn't be living together. I would wait for the marriage, and then we move in. But that's just me. You know, but have the conversation with him and let him know. Give him, not an ultimatum, but just say, what are we doing? What are we doing? Okay? All right, Cindy, okay. more Ask Wendy is next. More Ask Wendy, Tia is in Maryland. Tia, how you doing? How you doing? Good, thank you. What's your question? So my question is, my best friend of 25 years is not talking to me because I won't watch her new baby for her. I love her, but I am super busy. Plus, I have my own family. She's expecting me to watch her baby because I work from home. Wendy, am I wrong for not watching this chick's baby for her? Well, um, look, you know, in this time, of COVID and everything going crazy with the world, it's really important that we help each other as human beings. Like Guy was talking about, let's patronize restaurants if we can. And you know what? It, you are wrong, but so right. Have the conversation with her and let her know you're really busy and you've got your own family and you look 25. So who's been your friend for 25 years? No, but you know what? <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. Have the conversation with her. And by the way, how old is her baby? Um, not even one years old. Oh, eight get months. out of here. Get out. That's a problem. Be kind, but be firm. Okay. We'll be right back. Okay. Time for pop quiz. Daphne is in New Orleans. Daphne, how you doing? Wendy, how you doing? Very well, thank you. You should get this, I think you will. All right, Janet Jackson has the new documentary in the works. What was her first number one hit? Was it When I Think of You, Nasty, or Control? Oh gosh, oh gosh, okay. Um, I'm gonna say Nasty? No! Oh no! When, when I Think of You, 1986, it's okay. It's okay, we're gonna send you a $100 um, gift card to Shoe Dazzle, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Birthday shout out to, to Jannard. Jannard is uh, 31, he lives in Brooklyn. So what he's doing for his birthday, look, look at him. He's gonna rent a luxurious hotel room and celebrate in the hot tub. <laughs> Jannard, we're gonna send you your birthday crown. Enjoy your birthday. If you want your birthday shouted out here on the show, I'll do you right. Just go to wendyshow.com. We'll be right back. I'm going 
to go change into my robe and get a little bit more comfortable. And we're gonna do an after show where I wanna talk to you about the Real Housewives of Atlanta. I'll break all that down. I love you, Guy Fieri. Thank you for the food. I'm taking it all home. Uh, and my uh, co-host, my studio audience here, and my guest on the virtual. Tomorrow, Pooch Hall is here. And I got you with the hot topics. I love you for enjoying today. And I'll see you next time on Wendy. Bye. <laughs>